I kind of compare it to a Monet picture. If you're standing right on top of it, you may not see the entire picture. You see bits and pieces of the picture. You may see color, but as you step back and you take a look at it, they create a much more focused picture. In this case, however, the picture Lamont Pugh is looking at isn't of water lilies or of a woman with a parasol, but millions of data points that he and a collection of enforcement agencies say, when put together, reveal an estimated $90 billion in Medicare fraud. It's really not quantifiable. We know it exists, we know it's substantial, uh, and we know it's a problem. With 54 million Americans participating in Medicare, which provides health care services to elderly and disabled citizens, the ambiguity surrounding the exact cost of fraudulent activity in the United States taxpayer-funded system is understandable. The fraud thrives in the sheer scale of the operation, exploiting a sea of paperwork, millions of identification numbers, and an annual federal budget nearly equal to the U.S. Department of Defense. But recently, the task of identifying, tracking, and prosecuting criminal activity in the Medicare system received a substantial new weapon, big data. Well, we use data in a variety of ways. We're looking at different types of trends, whether they be national trends, geographic trends, things that are unusual, things that stand out, things that just don't make sense. While each Medicare fraud scheme may follow a somewhat similar playbook, the arrival of big data has allowed investigators to run millions of claims against one another. To look at the data, study the data, we can use that um, to lead us in the right direction investigatively, and we can also use it to confirm and corroborate leads that we have from more traditional sources. So far, this approach has identified nine cities where billing trends jump off the charts as outliers. In Brooklyn, data analysis resulted in the takedown of a Ukrainian-run physical therapy clinic that billed $50 million in illegal payments. In Miami, authorities have cracked down on actors billing for unnecessary, durable medical equipment like wheelchairs. And recently, operators of home health care agencies in Detroit have been targeted. One scheme popular here is known as the red, white, and blue scheme, where doctors or home health care workers send recruiters onto the streets and offer to cheaply purchase Medicare beneficiary identification numbers. Soup kitchens, street corners, wherever they could find somebody that had a Medicare number that was willing to sell their number for $50. Maureen Reddy has been with the FBI for 23 years, working out of the Detroit office since 2010. They make it look like they're patients of their home health care companies. And so the patients sign off on uh, treatment forms that they allegedly received. And then they would get $50. And for a lot of these people, $50 was a week's, two weeks worth of food. Authorities in Detroit say it's the one-two punch of a depressed economy and relaxed regulations that allow fraud to thrive here. Down and out Medicare beneficiaries readily sell their identification numbers to buy food. Doctors, even those barred in other states, can easily get a license in Michigan. You know, our investigations have shown that the doctors can be as criminal as the home health care owners. And, um, and there are some that should not have any respect. You know, Medicare fraud occurs across the country. Why is it here specifically in Detroit? Because I think there's opportunity here and I think, you know, the criminal element that exists in, in, in the healthcare fraud world looks at this as a potential for, uh, for profit. While the conditions here may not change anytime soon, the use of big data to crack down on fraud is shaking up the environment. Between 2010 and 2013, Medicare billings in Detroit have fallen by $600 million, a much bigger drop than other regions. It's a sign to investigators that their efforts are having an impact. Kara Scannell, Financial Times, Detroit, Michigan.